So hi, I am Brittany Istennis. I am the Open Source Program Office Strategist at Fannie Mae. I focus mainly on the con contribution of open source outside of the company, the consumption of open source, community building within special interest groups and communities of practice, many of the gray areas in between, and then of course, leading the inner source governance and adoption efforts within the company. So today we're going to focus on how inner source and open source works together within a secure model. So for the focus of today's session, I'm going to break things down much like John Oliver on last week tonight, for those that are familiar. So we're going to talk about how an OSPO supports inner source initiatives, the impact of open source and inner source, how we can incorporate both of these practices, how Fannie Mae is marrying both of these efforts, and also multiple times within this presentation, I'm going to talk about impact and direct impact. So I'm at a very high level, you know, I'm just going to talk about what an open source program office is. I know that most of you do know what an OSPO is, but it's sometimes nice to get a refresh for maybe new members of the community. So for example, at Fannie Mae, our OSPO is entrenched deeply within the enterprise. It is really becoming a core within the business and the business models. We aim to be a center of excellence for all things encompassing inner source as well as open source. We advocate for the open source engagement in a risk adverse, highly regulated environment. We partner with many key stakeholders across the organization. And as I mentioned, we're central to the business function. And so on the community side, where I really focus heavily, there are three core responsibilities. We have open source usage and contribution, inner source collaboration, as well as community. <clears throat> So I just want to really briefly talk about the rise of inner source. So what's really interesting in the OSPO space is that many open source program offices and the open source program office team members are taking on the role of subject matter experts for inner source. Inner source is such a solid staple within the way that I plan and execute, but now it's time to take this further. We know as this community that inner source works. So I do want to give a huge kudos and shout out to this inner source commons community. You all are just creating these force that across many enterprises, small and large, where everyone's taking notice. You know, we're creating through an inner source practice, we're creating healthy and stable and secure projects, as well as increasing innovation and improving the developer experience. So how an OSPO can support inner source practices. So as for mentioned, inner source is growing. I mean, just look around. Some companies have dedicated teams for inner source alone, but many times these do fall within the open source program office. At Fannie Mae, we do have dedicated team members to inner source, and they work in many facets of the governance, which makes developing our software and products great. We focus on company culture with an inner source by convincing teams that opening up their projects will make things more secure and stable. Our OSPO is a conduit to bringing many teams together that otherwise would not know each other or the work that one another is doing. And we have targeted things in such a way that we're really like the detectives in finding all of the pieces that bring the case together. We're also subject matter experts that teach teams on how to work together to build their project thinking inner source first. That is our end goal. All projects, even though they could potentially be locked for a certain sort of way, should be set up with the mindset for eventual release and growth. You know, inner source and connections, we know that it effectively reduces technical debt and increases developer productivity, innovations, and partnerships. So this is a really fantastic graphic that shows how teams initially did work together and how they actually should work together. You have you one team with your executives, your managers, your development, and then there's a wall and then another team doing the same thing. And so what we're trying to do with a successful inner source model is you can see how all of these teams do become intertwined and dependent on one another for success. And then also, you know, what can we learn about these technical communities and what we're trying to do within that concept of transparency? Transparent mindset is the key for success, but that does come with some extra caveats, which I'll talk about soon. With inner, inner source, we do want to have open participation, strong, clear contributing guidelines, and test suites, which are key to success for merges. And also with anything, you do have to have these governance. There are rules that we do have to live by. Otherwise, 
we do develop chaos in this proverbial wild west. And as an older technologist, I've been on the side of minimal guidelines. That's a free for all with confusion. And this is why I really do appreciate the InterSource Commons community for providing strong guidelines that are very much so a common practice, but pulls together completely in for success. So, you know, moving away from the interdependencies of how open source works and how inner source works, I really want to focus on how these practices work together. We all knew this was going to come up at some point within any presentation. Vulnerabilities affect all aspects of software development. And now that I work in a financial service space, I've learned about the intense reasoning within risk, being risk adverse, and how important these things are to think about when moving into the development space. Now we can see, and I'm not going to name the name of what we all went through in December last year, but vulnerabilities are the top talking point for many teams and inner source program offices and open source program offices are being looked to for solutions, whether that be the rise of the software bill of material, secure packages, and vendor supported solutions, we still need it to be at the base with our maintainers because as we know, roughly 90% of all software applications contain open source software. And then our maintainer community needs support internally and externally. One interesting fact that I learned last week was that the open SSL project is being consumed over 1 billion times. And when that drives down to the fact that it's being supported by 18 maintainers, and so one of the biggest ways to support outside of funding is to give back to these projects that we rely upon. So what are we as Fannie Mae doing about this, not only within the open source space, but within the inner source space? We're going upstream for a solution. We're using this open source maintainer model to the support of our inner source initiatives internally. We want to be a part of the solution and not a consistent consumer. We are taking the clean dependency project with internal inner source consumption. We are utilizing from the inner source commons patterns, the trusted committer and trusted maintainer model that has been developed to ensure that our engineers are solving these practices of perceived vulnerabilities. We have developed an internal testing and consumption suite, which will then be applied to internal teams. And one of the main goals in mind is that we will create our own internal maintainers to advocate for their projects and then maybe give back into the open. Because what I love about inner source and inner source practices, for folks that have not given back into the open before, this is a great starting point to understand how a community works. And so I'm very, very grateful for all of that. And so, you know, the upstream problem solving and we're applying it to our dependency management, we're proactively identifying and modifying dependency sources, cleaning them, and then making them available for our internal projects through inner source patterns, and then also potentially giving back into the open when needed. And so with this clean dependency project, the inner source model ensures that all of these projects have more eyes on them. When a vulnerability comes up within an enterprise, nine times out of 10, it's not just one project, it's more than one. And so with inner source, we have that transparency to be able to see what is happening. And now we actually do have a path for resolution. You know, inner source also impacts many projects. So we want to make sure that when a vulnerability comes up, we can determine it quickly. Because when I, in, back in December, I, it took some time, right? And so now we have a process in place that's clear and defined. And then also with that, as opposed to the big scramble, when we have things that are structurally organized internally, the developer experience gets a lot better. And then that also ties into direct high level stakeholder engagement, which in order for InterSource to be successful within an enterprise, you need to have your circle involved. So another way that we're doing this with the clean dependency project is InterSource and the golden patches. We're streaming patches for distribution. So we're finding these fixes, developing these fixes, 
and then we're pushing them back to our internal community from the open. You know, the, the patches of internal software and then we share them. We, as mentioned, create a centralized distribution model for the software maintenance, and we're training and enabling our open source maintainers through that process. And here is how our stakeholders are getting engaged through inner source and open source. We are working with, as the open source program office, direct leadership. We have the customers, our engineering teams, our trusted maintainers. We're also working with the external community and legal and infosec and risk. <clears throat> So really why all of this matters, like why? So engaged and creating a trusted committer model internally is fantastic and it works, it very much so works. More teams are learning about the clean dependency project and with that understanding that we are able to potentially help them innovate faster, they want to go in our source. We have more teams now collaborating with one another that otherwise would not have talked. And so we have more engineers that are able to innovate faster. And honestly, this is just the starting point. So with that, there's way more to come. And so I just want to thank you all so much. And I look forward to chatting after our next wonderful round of speakers.